Hi folks, this is Sean Bagshaw from Outdoor Exposure Photography and Photo Cascadia. Even though I teach a wide range of advanced creative image developing techniques, one of the most common questions I get seems quite simple at first. And that's how do you create a text or logo watermark on an image that will be shared on the internet? As our images go out into the world, a watermark is a simple way to let people know who they belong to. Watermarking an image in Photoshop by hand requires many steps. If you do it frequently, then recording an action is the way to go. But creating a single action that will work on any size image and in either the vertical or horizontal perspective is tricky. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create one Photoshop action that will do just that. The first step is to create your watermark image files. For this to work on any size image, your watermark image needs to be at least as large as the images you'll place the watermark on. Watermarks are generally for images that will be shared on the web or in email, so they usually are not placed on full resolution images. However, it doesn't hurt to plan your watermark to work on any size image, so your bases are covered. In my case, my largest images come from my 50 megapixel Canon 5D SR, and they are 5,792 pixels by 8,699 pixels. Most current cameras have a resolution less than this, so your watermark files probably don't need to be as large as mine. If you have a square logo, like my mountain logo, then it can be sized to the shorter side of your images. Since the largest images I have will be 5,792 pixels on the short side, I size my logo to 6,000 pixels on a side. If your logo is not square, or if you'll be using text as a watermark, then you may want to create two separate watermark files, one as wide as your largest horizontal images, and one as wide as your largest vertical images. For my text watermarks, I have this one, which is 9,000 pixels wide, so it fits my largest horizontal images. And I have this one, which is 6,000 pixels wide, so it fits my largest vertical images. Once you have your watermark files, you're ready to record some actions. I'm going to begin with recording an action that places my square logo watermark on any image. To record an action, you click the new action button at the bottom of the actions panel and if you don't have the actions panel open on your desktop then you go to window and select actions from the list and it should appear so I'll click that new action button and in this case I'm gonna call it logo watermark and I'm going to place this in my examples action set but you can put it in any action set that makes sense in your system. And if you want to assign a function key or a color to the action, you can, but I generally don't. Now when I press record, you'll see that the red record button on the actions panel is activated, and anything I do in Photoshop from this point forward will be recorded into this logo watermark action. The first step in my action is going to be to go to the file menu and then select place embedded. And in this case I'm going to embed my white mountain large watermark. So I'll select that and click place. And because I size my logo to be larger than the short dimension of my largest images, Photoshop automatically sizes the logo to exactly fit. But I don't actually want the logo to be this large, so I'm going to hold down the Shift and Alt key, or Shift and Option on a Mac, and then from one of the corners I'm going to drag the logo and size it to the size that I actually want it to be in my image. Holding down the Shift and the Option or Alt keys while I size it keeps it centered in the middle of the image and also keeps it proportional. Once I have it the size I want it, I can click the check mark button to place the image. And the logo is currently in the center of the image. If that's where I want it, I'm good to go. If that's not where I want it, the next thing I'll do is pick the Move tool from the toolbar and then I will control or command A to select all and then I can use the alignment buttons up here in the move tool to 
tell Photoshop where to align the logo to. So if I want the logo to be at the bottom and centered, I would just click this one and it'll move it there. If I want it to be at the bottom and also on the left, I would click this one second. Or if I wanted it to be at the bottom and on the right, I could click this one and move it to the right. Once I have the logo in the position that I want it to be in, I'll type Control or Command D to deselect. And then with my Move tool still active, I can use the arrow keys on my keyboard to further nudge the logo a little bit so I've got some space near the edges. So I'm going to take it to the left a little bit and also up a little bit and give myself some space on either side of the logo. The final step is that I don't want my logo to be full opacity. So I'm going to come over here to the opacity slider and turn down the opacity of my logo so it's the opacity that I want it. And that's it. Now that I'm done recording that action, I can click the stop button at the bottom of the actions panel. And this is important because if I don't click the stop button, then that action will just continue recording. And that's it. That action has now been recorded right here. So to test it, I'm going to go back in my history to where I started with this image. Then I'm going to click on the logo watermark and press play in the actions panel and see if it works. And it does. So one click and I've placed that watermark on the image. Now the true test will be if it works on different size images and also vertical images. So again, I'll go back in the history and now I'm going to resize this image. You can size the image using Photoshop's image size functions, but I like to size my images for the web using the TK Actions V4 panel and using his web sharpening and sizing actions there. So I'm going to size this one to, oh, let's just say a thousand pixels on the horizontal side. So I'm going to click OK and it'll create a copy of that image that's sized to 1000 pixels. So now this is a much, much smaller image than the original. Let's see if this action also works. So with logo watermark action selected, I'll go ahead and click play and there it is. So my watermark has been placed and sized proportionally for this smaller image and that works on any size image. Now let's try it on a vertical image. So here's a full size vertical image. I'm going to go ahead and click the logo watermark. And yep, placed it right down in that corner. It knew where to go. And if I back up and create a smaller sized image for the web, let's say 800 pixels vertical, click OK. So there's that web-sized vertical image and let me go ahead and play the logo watermark and again it knows where to place it and how to size it so that works perfectly. I'm going to go ahead and close these two small sized images. So that's how to create a single action that will place a square logo on any size vertical or horizontal image. Now let's do the same for non-square or text watermark images, which is slightly more involved but uses the same basic principles. I'll start with the horizontal image. And like before, I will record a new action. So I'm going to collapse this logo watermark action and click to record a new action. And I'm going to call this one text watermark landscape and it's going to be in my example set and so I can click record. Now I'll go to file, place embedded, and select my text landscape gray watermark. And it places it there in the center of the image and because I size the watermark large enough to fit my largest images in the horizontal direction, it perfectly fits all the way across the image. So next I click the check mark to place the image and then as before I'll type control or command A to select all and then with the move tool selected I can use the alignment buttons to place the image which I want to be at the bottom. Now I can type control or command D to deselect and I'm going to use the arrow keys to nudge that up off the bottom just slightly. 
Normally I use a white text watermark and then adjust the opacity, but I made this watermark text gray so that you could see it more easily. You can experiment with different colors of text and different opacities of text to find out what works best for you. And that's it for that action. So now I click the stop button to stop recording and I'll back up so that I've got the image without the watermark on it and now let's test it on a web-sized image. So again I'll take this down to a thousand pixels on the horizontal side and size it for the web and then go ahead and play this text watermark landscape action and see that it works and places the watermark exactly where I want it. So that's great. Now I'm going to repeat those same steps for a vertical image. So I'll collapse this action, record a new action, call this one text watermark vertical and click record. Then go to file, place embedded and this one I'm going to do my text vertical gray watermark and place it and control or command A to select all move it to the bottom control or command D to deselect use the arrow key to move it up off the bottom a little bit and then click stop to stop recording now let's test that one out so I'll collapse that action and go back in the history to where the image doesn't have a watermark on it and size it 800 pixels vertical click OK there's my sized image now I'll go to my text watermark vertical and click play and there's my watermark so everything looks like it's working great but now I have two separate actions for my text watermark and I said I'd be able to have just one action to do it on any image just like I did with the square logo to make this possible we need to record a very simple third action and here's how that goes record a new action call this one text watermark and click record and then in the actions panel drop down menu I'm going to select insert conditional and in this conditional action if the document is landscape I am then going to play the action text watermark landscape otherwise if it's not landscape I'm going to play the action text watermark vertical and say OK and then click the stop button because that's all there is to this action so let's go ahead and close that action and I'm actually going to move it up so that my text watermark action and my logo watermark action are next to each other. Now with that single action I should be able to place a text watermark that's correctly proportioned on any size image and regardless of whether it's vertical or horizontal. So let's try it out. Let's start with this vertical image and play the text watermark and it works and let's size it and play it again and it works and go back to the horizontal image and play the action and it works on the full size and now size it and play that same action and it also works there and if I want both a text watermark and a logo watermark I can play one and then play the other and that's how to create one action that'll place a logo or text watermark on any size image in either orientation. The next video is an extension to this idea for people who use the TK Actions V4 or V3 panel.